Well, Terilyn Gray is the CEO of the Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce, and she joins us from Fresno, California. Thanks so much for, uh, for coming on to talk about these issues. Uh, we saw that heartbreaking case of the guy who was uh, kicked out of his house. There are so many people losing their homes. Many small businesses are struggling to pay their rents, too, and, and we hear of small business owners uh, down to their last dimes. What effect has this COVID economic crisis had on the folks who run these businesses uh, that you deal with? Uh, well, it, in short, Kim, has been devastating. Um, we have, uh, we're, we're seeing up to 50% of um, black businesses closing, um, while 30% of all small businesses are facing closure. So um, we have a disproportionate impact in the black business community, and uh, many are struggling. Do you know why that's uh, affecting black businesses disproportionately? Well, absolutely. <laughs> um, we had issues in um, the black business community um, prior to COVID-19. Um, we have had significant challenges. Uh, while uh, business revenue has grown um, in groups outside of our groups, um, we have not seen um, black business revenue increase at the same rate. Black women are starting starting businesses at a rate faster than our white counterparts and other ethnic groups, yet we lag behind in earnings. While the number of women-owned businesses grew uh, 21% from 2014 to 2019, firms owned by women of color grew at double that rate, 43%. For black women, it grew even faster, 50%, yet the income disparity between women of color and non-minority women is ever increasing. Mm. Um, we're talking about non-minority women earning about four times what black women earn in their business. And that kind of uh, resembles what we have fought so hard for in terms of wage discrimination. Um, black women are earning less for doing the same work as their white counterparts. Those statistics are certainly dispiriting. It must be also hard to hear the stories of those business owners who are, who are trying to, to hold on but, but simply can't. Absolutely. You know, I have some incredible businesses um, as members of our chamber and um, uh, some, some very talented, bright, very capable uh, women-owned businesses and male-owned businesses. But I can think of two women who come to mind right now. They both have PhDs, clearly bright and capable in their areas. Um, they are unable to get the access to capital that both of them need to expand. One it operates a clinical setting and it needs to hire more staff, cannot get access to capital to do so. The other is a manufacturer and despite being on home shopping network and having contracts with um, major um, retailers, she's still unable to get the access to capital to grow. Um, so it's, it's very disheartening when you see capabilities across the board and don't have access. I have another member that has a restaurant. Um, they can't afford to do the remodel necessary to provide outdoor dining, and therefore they remain closed. But I want to quickly ask you, uh, we don't have much time left, but there are federal programs that were supposed to help. Uh, are they not helping? Uh, well, um, the first stimulus package, we saw about 5% of our business get access to financial assistance. Um, after the uh, second round and the increased deadline, we saw that number go up to 18%. But it's still not enough to quell the closures that we are seeing in our community. And we're just are, are suffering from years, decades of disinvestment um, in our communities. And that leads to lots of problems, um, most especially what we're seeing with our black mm -hmm. businesses. So many problems and, and very few solutions right now, but uh, thank you very much for speaking with us, Tara Lynn Gray. We appreciate it. Thank you.